Gatwick, the busiest single runway airport in the world. 25,000 staff, 120,000 bags a day, 33 million passengers a year. Put your bag on first, put the first one on, that would be good. In the past, Gatwick struggled to cope with all the things that can go wrong and do go wrong. Operating an international airport is an unpredictable business. No, you've got to be on your guard and prepared at all times. But now, Gatwick's under new ownership and undergoing a £1 billion facelift. The aim? To create the best airport in the world. We need to be driving this airport to 45 million passengers uh, off the single runway. Flight control. Check. With new management comes tough talk. We've got to change our business now. We want to remove those failures. There's no accountability, there's no leadership, there's no direction. We don't have time to wait. Put up or shut up. Over the last year, we've been there capturing the highs and the lows as the world's busiest single runway airport gets even busier. Ambulance crew on route, please move to one side. I need to move you around so you're going down this way for us, please. Conflicting views as to where we're supposed to go, huge queues, nowhere to sit down. Fundamentally, something's wrong. It failed, and it's the second time it's failed in a week. You're responsible, yeah? Coming up, job cuts leave staff worried. If you listen to the rumours, you'd never sleep at night anyway. As a new breed of workers joins the ranks. Lo que pasa que ha venido el grupo, primer grupo ha entrado. There's always going to be a sense that, that someone might be moving in on your territory, for the want of a better word. The South Terminal is on full alert. It's fire. Make your way downstairs, please. Let's go down the emergency exit there. Cheers, fella. And snow brings chaos to the airport. All day long it has been, wait, wait, wait. They're refusing to move at the moment. Everybody keeps shrugging their shoulders at me and telling me it's nothing to do with them. Another busy day in paradise. Summer 2010. Gatwick is in the middle of a multi-million pound makeover. But the second largest airport in the country has to remain open 365 days of the year. As head of terminals, it's up to Marcus Stanton to ensure construction continues around the passengers. If you think about the logic, if we've already got water appearing in these areas, because I'm not sticking passengers on wet escalators, for me it's a little bit bigger than a snag, doesn't it, if the design doesn't work? If we find faults, we fix faults. Next time we go along, we expect them to be fixed. If they're not fixed, we've got the wrong people. And it's the second time it's failed in a week. So fundamentally, something's wrong. You're responsible. Yeah. OK, anything else while we're over here? I know some people don't like me. I know some people, to a degree, fear me. So what? Senior manager Marcus isn't only in charge of the terminal itself, he's responsible for 500 staff, including 55 information passenger assistants. The IPAs are the public face of the airport. Easy jet this morning, just round this way please for check-in. Have a good day guys. Down the bottom on the left-hand side, international arrivals. OK. You're all right there, mate. Tell me a little bit about what happened. They're a highly trained team. There could be a bomb threat, there could well be an unattended bag that we've had to close the area off. Maybe somebody's got sick in the middle of the terminal. The next problem you might find is security's really, really busy, so the people can't get through security on time, and they can't see their check-in areas that they need, to, they need to find. Or our favourite, fire bells. Richard Voice and Stuart Bone work in the South Terminal. Between them, they've been at Gatwick for 30 years. Passengers of and Ben, Ben and Sai, please contact Zone K Monarch check in all the Swiss board desk in the International Departures Lounge. Who puts out toss pop names like that? Sorry, I'll show that out there. Obviously, Air Transat will be aware of the situation the same as we are. So, but you know what it's like with air travel, mate, keep your fingers crossed. 26 of the IPAs are located half a mile away in the North Terminal. It's here the more exotic, long-haul destination passengers are catered for. 
Do you want a hand? Where's, where's your little one? With the inevitable north-south divide, Laurie Treacher and David King are well aware of the rivalry that comes with the territory. South Terminal is a lot busier, so obviously they have possibly more calls than us. Um, different clientele. Yeah, they're more. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bucket and spade all the time. This is what they call yeah. it, yeah, yeah bucket and spade. Bucket and spade. There's a lot of hours of schedule over here. Posh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need some help, uh, with it might be more genteel in the North Terminal, but it still gets its fair share of drama. We've had a bleeding enough today without you right. lot starting on us. What you need to do is just calm down and behave yourself a little well, bit don't and keep it. the language down. Will you tell him Keep the language down and stop pushing people around. Well, tell okay? people to stop pushing me around. No one pushed you. I was out there. I'll keep my own back on it. Don't no, worry. please. Please. It's up to the IPAs to ensure the safety of every passenger who travels through Gatwick. There's no missing the bells, but Stuart Bones got no idea where or how severe the fire might be. Well, what we've got to do is just go around and clear the uh, floor up here because obviously there's full bells up here, which means it's in this area somewhere. But we're just going to wait to get a uh, fixed location. An average of 85,000 passengers come to Gatwick every day. Guys, you need to make your, make your way downstairs, please. Let's go down to the emergency exit there, cheers, fella. Stuart needs to think on his feet and weigh up safety versus disruption. We'll leave him over there for a minute. It's quiet over there. Nobody can go through into the departure lounge, so the security process has to stop. Meanwhile, people in another area are still checking in, so it's just a pile up, pile up, pile up of people. Mid-evacuation, Stuart gets a call from Gatwick's control centre. We have now been told that this is a stuck jet based due to technical error with the system. However, at this time, we are, are unable to silence bells. We are unable to silence bells. Passengers and staff are not to evacuate. Well, what they're saying is it looks like it's a bit of a technical issue, so we can stand down on it, but at this time, we can't silence the bells. Normally, if something like this happens, you know, like we're in a position to be able to turn them off. Uh, well, I don't know why we can't today. But most of the time when they go off, people are generally... Ah, oh, look at that. Silence is golden. Looks like we're done there. Let's go for a walk. It's the end of the summer, and talk of job cuts is still hanging over the staff. Yeah, we're, in, we're one, only employed for our ability to do the job well, but to look good at the same time. So he's leading the way. There you go, do that next thing with the man looking in the distance. Yeah, yeah. But Stuart and Richard That's are it. maintaining their sense of humour. Yeah, go on. So, man running on the beach. That's it. That's, oh, look at that, he could be a model. Senior manager Marcus Stanton takes a keen interest in all of his staff, but he isn't happy with some IPA attitudes. It's the walking round with their, their head down, not making eye contact with a passenger. It's the walking round needlessly in pairs doing that as well, holding hands, when actually you only need one, and actually if you spread out, you're, you're doing double the amount of work. And, and there's quite a few other attitudinal issues we've got. Passenger Hyman. Passenger Hyman, please contact airport information. I just, normally I only talk like that at the weekends when I can go from stew to sue just like that. <laughs> New managers have already cut 330 jobs and are considering more. Now's our opportunity to think we're changing round here. Some people are not suitable for the role. Let's deal with that situation. If I'm going to cut your head count, I'm going to tell you. It's a worrying time for the staff. We've heard this, we've heard that. Rumours are that um, the company's just going to do the new building, make it look lovely, get the airlines here and sell. It's such a huge place, this airport. If you listen to the rumours, you'd never sleep at night.
Gatwick Airport is under new ownership. One billion pounds is being invested into transforming the business. Major building work is going on all over the site, but it's vital the airport stays open 24-7. Yeah, so As head of terminals, Marcus Stanton has to ensure his 500-strong team continue performing to full capacity. I'm busy down here today. It's about speeding things up, it's the pace, setting some challenging deadlines and actually feeling a bit of pain if you don't meet them. Over 300 staff have gone over the last 18 months under the new administration. The whole of the frontline operation is being reviewed at the moment. Yes, if you stay there, just going around this pillar. It's a worrying time for the workforce, including information passenger assistants like Stuart Bone and Richard Voice, the public face of Gatwick. The airline business is really, really unpredictable. And the one thing I've learned after being up here for 18 years is you can't predict anything. You hear rumours after rumours after rumours. You can't sit here and surmise at anything. You have to wait until the big fella turns around and, and, and marks his bit of paper that says what you are going to be doing and what you're not going to be doing. The IPAs are trained to be ready for any eventuality. They never know what's around the corner. Uh, we've got a medical call down to the special assistance desk near Zone B. Um, and it's, um, so there's an old fella down there complaining that he's, uh, he's bleeding from somewhere. You got a case right in your mouth? Yeah? Oh my, good job. Which taste is it that was actually taken out? Just give a little swig and then have a spit into there for me. And then let's have a look at your mouth so I can see what's going on. Just so you can wash it out. Yeah, have a spit in there. Quite a bit One minute, you know, you could be dead quiet and not a great deal's happening, and all of a sudden you're on your toes again. You can attend a, a, a bit of blood and a bit of sick and, and all those sort of things when it's busy. I mean, you can go from medical job to medical job to medical job. You know, you see quite, a, you can see quite a bit of blood at times. You're right to just look after these guys and pop them through for me. The IPAs are the first port of call for any emergency in the terminals. Central. Gatwick's currently on high terror alert. Stuart's on his way to the first emergency of his shift. Nice any Every day, passenger assistants get over 20 calls to unattended bags. Each one is treated as suspicious. At the scene, Stuart discovers not one suspect suitcase, but three. And I'll see if I can uh, get a call put out, see if anybody wants to return back to these bags. Particularly as they're not in there yet. We'll just move away from that for a second. Just as the emergency call is about to go out, a sheepish foreign student appears. You mustn't leave your bag anywhere alone. You must keep it with you at all times. Are you all together? What? Are you travelling? Are you together? It's a class. A class? Right, right, right. you're with a school. Right, school okay, class. okay, okay. Just make sure you keep all your bags with you. Yes? Yes. If we hadn't have been sure about that, that would have been upgraded, and then this whole area would have had to be evacuated and cleared until, you know, we can get the people in with the right equipment to have a look at the bag and stand it down. So, you know, the implications of it are quite serious. The items have been reunited with their owners and uh, they've been briefed. Copy, maintain. Lovely. December. One of Gatwick's busiest times of the year brings specific challenges for management and staff. With temperatures plummeting to minus 11, Britain's in the grip of the coldest winter for over a century. As snow brings the country to a standstill, the airport appears to be avoiding the worst of the weather. Quite heavy snowfall north and south of the airport uh, during the day. I believe it's still snowing now. Uh, but the Airfield ops are out there uh, with their snow ploughs. They're keeping the runways open, taxiways open, and the access roads to and from the airport. Uh, as far as I know, all airports are open at the moment as we speak, so hopefully most people will be OK. But nothing could have prepared Gatwick for what was about to happen overnight. 8 a.m. Unprecedented snowfalls bring the airport and most of the country to a standstill. Despite being urged not to travel, passengers continue to arrive at the airport. But with all flights grounded, there's nowhere for them to go. Got one easy jet plug and it's cancelled. 
If you speak to the Skybreak ticket desk there, they might be able to give you some other ideas. But, I've got to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen, not the next, at least the next 12, 24 hours. Richard Voice and his fellow passenger assistants are on the front line. Most people are pretty good. They understand that it's not our fault. They come up to the desk, you'll get the odd one or two that'll be angry with you, and they've got every right to be angry. They're not necessarily personally angry with you, they're just angry at the situation, and you're the first bloke that they get to let the steam off at. Is that the Riga? It's been cancelled, I think. You know, you can take it one or two ways, really. You can take it badly and make your day worse, or just take it on the chin and put up with it and help them out. End of the hall on the left of the left baggage is a ticket desk for trains, okay. or main station in there, fight your way through the paper and have a bash at the man at the desk in there. Okay. But don't slap him. No. But it's not only a headache for Richard and his crew. At Gatwick's control centre, head of terminals Marcus Stanton has been on duty since 4.30 a.m. For him, it couldn't get much worse. Another busy day in paradise. Um, so we've got some snow disruption. Uh, we had some heavy uh, snowfall in the night. Original forecast was one to two centimetres, changed about eight or nine o'clock last night um, to more like five to ten and then increasing. So that forecast has only got worse as the sort of evening went on. Can you speak to Shuttle? It's about the system going down. Yeah, that's what the snow continues to fall thick and fast. The forecast is looking grim. Gatwick's management make a difficult decision. And in the last few minutes, it's been confirmed that uh, Gatwick, Britain's second biggest airport, is now closed. We decided, uh, based on the forecast, current situation out in the airfield, that we will be closed for the remainder of the day. It's better to give a very clear message to passengers what's happening as opposed to what's happening every few hours uh, because the situation will not improve today. Hundreds of passengers are stranded at the airport and they can't get away or get home. I don't even put grit on half the pavements around here. I fell over four times, my missus fell down four times. Got off the bus and he walked in the slush. And he even got no grit down. Big, second biggest airport in the country, and this is how we're treated. It's a difficult time for terminal staff. OK, ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? We've got an ambulance crew coming in. in a second, Both on the ground... Ambulance crew on route. Please move to one side. ..and behind the scenes. We're asking passengers to obviously vacate the airport where they can stay in hotels, go back to their homes, uh, rebook online where cancelled flights, etc. Uh, added difficulties we've had uh, this morning. We've had a train stuck in the points at Gatwick Station, which has blocked up the whole northbound, southbound London to Brighton line. And we've obviously had the usual sort of road traffic delays. Midday. Hordes of passengers have been checked through security, hoping against the odds to get on flights. They're refusing to move at the moment, but we need to get them out for immigration. Once we can get immigration to agree it, then we can get them on the move and get them out. You're all going to follow me in a second. We're going to go down to the immigration hall, clear through immigration, pop you up into the reclaim, and then you can exit via customs. Okay? Right, that's all cancelled flights, guys. We'll take a lot of it through, all right? Yeah. So we'll just get you be nice to each other. We'll take you through that way, all right? OK. All right, guys, all right, guys. Right, come down this way. Down to the all day long it has been, wait, wait, wait. There has been no one to ask questions of and no information, just told to wait. And we're supposed to stay here until tomorrow morning when our flight might depart at 9.30. You tell me, is that fair? Yes, it, you know, we do have people that want to stay at the airport and they want to risk the fact that they might get on a flight at some point. But again, giving some big, bold messages to say that we're not opening, we are close to business, it is better for your welfare to leave the airport by trains, etc. when they're running, book into a hotel overnight and rebook online in terms of cancellations. But all transport links are down and hotels are filling up fast. The helpless passengers prepare for a long wait in the terminals.
we've been asked to go home. We've got to find our own way home and come back at six o'clock in the morning. How can we get... We can't get home. We're stuck. What we're going to do tonight, I don't know. This is my bed for the night. This is requiring a small mattress, please. Just form an orderly line over here and we'll do it one at a time, please, folks. One at a time. End of the line round that way. Go to the end of that line. Of that line. The end of the line. Guys, we need to form an orderly line. Can you go down there for me, please? 10 p.m. As travellers prepare for a long night at Gatwick, thousands of blankets and mattresses are handed out, along with emergency supplies of food and drink. <laughs> In total, 150,000 people fail to get their flights. Gatwick Airport has become the country's biggest dormitory. It's everyone's hope that the flights will start moving again. But the forecast for tomorrow is bleak. December 2010. Britain is experiencing its worst winter in over a hundred years. Heathrow and Stansted airports are open, but nine inches of snow sees Gatwick shut for a second day running. 680 flights are cancelled. Gatwick should have contingency plans to get flights off and on, on and off the grounds, irrespective of what the weather is. There's nothing you can do. I mean, it's all about safety, you know? And I guess if the flights could go out, we will fly. And if you have to spend another night, it's another night. The snow sees management get back to the shop floor. HR director Tina Oakley's only been in the job for two months, but today she finds herself assisting stranded travellers. We try to look after all the sort of vulnerable people that we can, and certainly last night I think we managed that quite well. Uh, today it's just about how do I get out of this place, <laughs> and the only way is to go to Heathrow. It's a financial disaster for the airport. Workers can't get in. Shops remain closed, and passengers are snoozing, not spending. 10 a.m. Gatwick calls a Silver Command crisis meeting with senior staff and airline representatives. They need to get the airport open by 6 a.m. tomorrow. Chief Operating Officer Scott Stanley's first concern isn't the passengers, it's getting the workers in. But, but currently, we don't have the, the facilities to look at rail, bus, roads. To get people in currently is really difficult. Yes. So it's got to get better between now and tomorrow morning to make a difference, or we've got to do something extraordinary. Yeah. Well, let's see what the numbers look like. Let's see what the staff numbers look like. We may be able to find a way of, of picking people up. Right? The more we understand about what tomorrow looks like and, you know, and how many passengers, uh, load factors and things like that, the easier it is for us to plan. Because what we don't want to do is open up at 6 o'clock and, and we die in the beach because nobody's here to operate the place. As high-level talks continue upstairs, passengers are left frustrated in the terminals. We've been treated terrible. Everybody keeps shrugging their shoulders at me and telling me it's nothing to do with them. You know, so who do I go to? I've rung my travel agent, I've rung my insurance, I've been on to everybody here, I've had that many arguments, my head is pounding, and I've got nothing. I know nothing. And now I'm getting angry because we're back to square one again, where we get nowhere. Sometimes two key calls. One is, what time are we going to open in the morning, assume we're going to open. And then the other one is, how do we uh, niftily uh, get aeroplanes uh, repositioning tonight? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a big gamble to go for six o'clock. I'm very much tempted to look at uh, cancelling the first wave, so we're looking at that. We haven't made a decision, but I'd like to put that in the mix. Because if it looks too dodgy, we can defer it and say, well, it's going to be 9 a.m. or something like that. Buy a little time, allow people to get, get, get in so we can handle it. So let's just make a call. But I think we've got a couple of hours to figure out what the uh, airfield can do. We'll have that. That'll ping around, and then we'll see what we can do first thing in the morning. The snow delay has proved disastrous for Andrew and Kim from Aldershot, who are on their way to America for a very special event. 
I want to marry this man desperately, and if I'm not married on Monday or by Monday, I am going to be so gutted. I think yesterday we were still hopeful that we'd be able to get out to Vegas um, and get married where we wanted to get married, but um, looking at the situation again today, I think it's pretty obvious that we're not.